Welcome to the Coffee Cup Lecture about Metamorphic Rocks. This is the final lecture in our series to help you identify rock types. Why a Coffee Cup Lecture? Because we aim to complete this lecture in about the same amount of time that it takes to drink a cup of coffee. So sit back, listen and enjoy your cup of coffee. Metamorphism means a change or a transformation. One type of rock changes to another type under certain conditions. There are three types of change that are possible, from igneous and sedimentary rocks, and from one type of metamorphic rock to another type of metamorphic rock. What do we mean by a change? It can be a change in mineral composition, a change in grain size, or a change in chemical composition. The change in the rock can occur because of a number of different factors. It may be the result of a change in temperature, change in pressure, or from a chemical environment. Changes here have been producing a Precambrian Sioux quartzite which is found at Pipestone National Monument in Minnesota. You can also see a fault running through this rock. Changes usually take place several kilometers below the surface of the earth where pressures and temperatures are higher. These are the Carboniferous shales of the Green River Formation that outcrop in Utah's Rhone Cliffs. Low-grade metamorphism will turn shales into a metamorphic rock called slate. This slate is found in the Smoky Mountains. It was formed from shales and dates to the Paleozoic period. It shows joints and bedding. It is important to understand that there is a difference between a rock formed from metamorphism and igneous rock. Igneous rocks form from a molten material. Metamorphic rocks do not actually melt during formation. Heating of rocks can occur when a rock is intruded by magna. The change that results from this heating is called thermal metamorphism. This picture actually shows metamorphic rock that is embedded in an igneous rock, granite. Rocks are sometimes subjected to great pressures and temperatures leading to deformation. This example shows disharmonic folding in quartzite. Large-scale deformation that takes place in mountain building is called regional metamorphism. Heat is perhaps the most important agent of metamorphism because it can result in recrystallization or a formation of new mineral crystals. Muscovite is an example of a mineral that has started to recrystallize. Garnet is a gemstone that has formed from heat during regional metamorphism. Here is a second example of garnet. Stress or pressure can be an important agent that helps bring about metamorphosis. Pressure increases with depth due to the weight of rock above. At medium pressures, metamorphism can produce staurolite crystals. This takes place at around 9 kilobars and about 600 degrees Celsius. Differential stress from pressure can result in considerable deformation as in this outcrop which displays folds caused by lateral compression and a mafic dike intrusion. If this takes place near the surface where temperatures are low then the deformation leads to fracture because the rock is brittle. Where the temperature is higher then deformation results in less fracture because the rock becomes ductile. The deformation is by flowing rather than fracturing. Here there is a sheath fold in calcite marble. Kyanite crystals are aluminum silicate which has recrystallized at high pressures. Migmatite rock is a typical metamorphic rock often formed from mica and horn blend under great pressure. Fluids may act as catalysts on mineral grains to produce recrystallization. Hedenborate is calcium iron silicate and is a mineral found in metamorphic rocks. This example shows the crystals embedded in quartz. Colorite is a mineral that is formed by pressure and by chemical conditions. This shows polished sections of colorite. The amount or degree of metamorphism is reflected in texture and mineralogy. Low-grade stress causes minerals to align. As stress becomes more extreme, minerals tend to recrystallize. As crystals grow, the rock becomes more coarse-grained. 
some minerals will show a banded or foliated appearance. Here we can see the foliation and crystallization of metamorphic basement rocks found in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. This photograph also shows the foliation and recrystallization of the metamorphic basement rocks in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Here the grain is not as coarse as in the previous example. Schist is formed from metamorphosed phyllite, which in turn was formed from slate, which was originally a shale. This example shows crystals of garnet in schist. This photograph shows the folded and deformed Clear Creek Vishnu Schist, a basement rock of Grand Canyon. Here is yet another example of a schist with garnet crystals. Nice is formed from a schist and often shows compositional banding as minerals become segregated. This gneiss in Alaska's Fairweather Mountains exhibits typical gneissic structure. Tophonae are small indentations formed by weathering. Here they show in Catalina gneiss. Marble results from metamorphism of limestone or dolomite. Whilst limestone consists only of small crystals, those of marble are medium to coarse, that is, they are larger. Chrysotile asbestos is a mineral consisting of very fine silicate fibers and is formed by the action of temperature, pressure and chemicals. Quartzite is formed by metamorphosis of quartz sandstone. This diagram shows a summary of the more common metamorphic rocks. Note that the first four of these represent a series showing increased pressure and temperatures. The following slides are a preview of the rocks that you will find in the kit. These are the metamorphic rocks that you will be expected to identify. Did you see any kind of layering, banding or possible signs of a cleavage plane? Remember that all of these are signs of a foliated rock. Again, ask yourself the questions about banding and layers. Then also ask yourself how this feels in terms of its texture. There is one clue that you will need to know. This rock will not bubble if you drop some acid on the surface. There are distinct colours in this sample that may help you. What about banding? Do you see any sign of banding here? Now this one should be quite easy. Ask yourself about foliation. What about colour? Then add a drop of acid to the surface. You might find that using the magnifying glass will be a help for this rock. Try and decide whether this rock is foliated. Can you see signs of foliation? Does this rock look as if it could be split easily? Is the rock striped? Is the rock smooth? This ends our coffee cup lecture on metamorphic rocks and it also ends our mini-series to help you identify the samples from the rock kit. You are now ready to identify all the samples in this kit. Thank you for watching and listening to our coffee cup lecture.